Heads up, this podcast contains some swearing. Previously on Lost in Williamsburg. Thank you, Thomas. It's very satisfying to hear you sing my praises. Sing my my praises. Everybody gather round as I sing. I'm sure you won't become tongue-tied. I, uh, um... Don't forget your steps, Thomas. Forget your your steps. steps, 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 steps. Ah, the good old Virginia Gazette. Paper of record for the city of Williamsburg. Let's see what you've got for me today. Hmm. Nothing out of the ordinary. Historic triangle tourism hits new lows. Bruce Hornsby returns home for a sold-out... Wait a minute, what's this? Tragedy struck Wednesday when longtime Williamsburg resident Avis Grizzard was killed in a pasture in the historic district. Oh my gosh. Around 1 p.m., police received reports of a naked man screaming and running through the historic district. How did I miss that? Oh, I hate to admit it, but Dale's right. I have been in this bed too long. Let's see. Officers said that right before he was gored by one of the historic Williamsburg Corporation's rare Devon oxen, Mr. Grizzard was shouting, Bring the life back to the dead and turn their blood from black to red. Holy mackerel! That line's from that old story I used to tell Caleb. This one's definitely a keeper. Where's my glue stick? Are you there, Margaret? It's me, Jessie. Jessie, oh my gosh. Come in, please. Is this a bad time? I probably should have called first. No, it's fine. Come in. Sorry for barging in. I ran into one of your guests downstairs. They said it would be fine for me to pop up and say hi. Of course it is. It's so nice to see you. You too. Seems like your B&B is doing well. Your guest had only nice things to say. Well, that's a relief. It's been so hard keeping things together with me still recovering from hip surgery. I'm sure it has, you poor thing. Poor me? Poor Dale is more like it. He's had to do double duty while I just lay here in bed all day reading the Gazette. Really? He doesn't seem to be here now. He just went out to run some errands. Hmm. But you're right. He should have been back by now. So, Margaret, I have something for you. You do? What have you got there? It's a surprise. I made them myself. Here. Wait a minute. Those look awfully familiar. They should. It's your own recipe. Margaret Souter's world-famous candied pecan brownies. But how? My recipe's a secret. Don't you remember? You gave it to me years ago. I did? Yes. That summer, I moved back to town to start my job in the history department. Oh, you're right. I forgot all about that. I don't think I've ever given that recipe to anyone else. Well, now I feel guilty because, honestly, I haven't made them in ages. Oh, well, that's... And to be extra honest, I don't really care for chocolate. Uh Uh-huh. But Valerie says they're delicious. Well, I appreciate the gesture. Thank you. It's nothing, really. I would have stopped by sooner. It's just that... Well, it's just that a 40-year rift does tend to complicate things. Well, like my mother used to say, when fishes grant wishes and Pa does the dishes, we'll all march in the Easter parade. Here, have a brownie. The hollings were casting deep black shadows in the moonlight. Ugh, I'm getting really hungry. But I can't stop reading this diary. The hollies were casting deep black... Oh, for Christ's sake. Sir, can you please keep your voice down? Oh, sorry. Thank you. God, why are librarians so damn uptight? The Hollies were casting casting deep deep black black shadows in the moonlight. moonlight. So So Richard Richard didn't didn't notice notice me at first. Had he heard any of my conversation with Thomas? He's such a practiced little liar, it was hard to tell. Thomas, Thomas, I've been looking for you everywhere. Hello again, Richard. Good evening, Richard. Oh, good evening, Mrs. Blackheart. Uh, Thomas. Yes? I've just met two lovely ladies, and they're absolutely dying to meet you. They are? I made up some story about how you broke into the governor's liquor cabinet tonight. (laughs) They're completely intrigued. What? Well, I had to give them some excuse for your erratic behavior tonight. Uh. Anyway, the ladies just arrived from England. London, actually. And they've agreed to meet us over by the boxwood maze. The boxwood? Please don't let's keep them waiting. They may change their minds. Well... I guess. That is, if you do not mind excusing Thomas, Mrs. Blackheart. No, it's fine. Go have fun. But listen, you boys better behave yourselves. You wouldn't want to cause trouble for Governor Fauquier. We certainly will. Behave, that is. Of course you will. For you to do otherwise would be unnatural. Unnatural, unnatural. <laughs> All right, then. Let's go, Thomas. Farewell, Mrs. Blackheart. 
It was lovely chatting with you. Uh, yes. Until we meet again. Until then. So, which way is the maze? Down this path, come on. Ow, stop pulling my arm. What a couple of morons. Damn these mosquitoes. They're out in force oh, tonight. Professor, uh, you startled me. Sorry, I just noticed you talking to Thomas a minute ago. I thought I might inquire as to what you were discussing. He was instructing me in the natural sciences. Uh, tree frogs. Tree frogs? Really? Yes. His knowledge of them was quite impressive. He made me feel rather foolish. I seriously doubt that. Is that so? Please, Hexabeth, we've known each other a long time. I can think of many words to describe you, but foolish is not one of them. Well, I guess when it's just the two of us, there's no need for your pious show of propriety. You didn't appreciate my compliment, then. Oh, is that what that was? In a way, I suppose. Well, in that case, I must say that you are one of the more perceptive men in Williamsburg. Thank you. Of course, I haven't had the benefit of an advanced education like Thomas has, but I do wonder... Yes? As smart and studious as he seems, I sometimes wonder if Thomas is being pushed too hard. Too hard, Mrs. Blackheart? Yes. I found that young men, when under a great deal of pressure, sometimes rebel against the authority of the older generation. Personally, I do not feel that a little rebelliousness is necessarily a bad thing, if it is balanced with a strong moral upbringing. Well, he does seem very well-mannered, but those are the ones who surprise us the most. When they go bad, that is. I'm confident that will never happen to young Mr. Jefferson. Are you? That is not the sort of behavior one would find in a William and Mary student. Really? Why is that? Because you and the other professors at the college are such models of Anglican perfection? I've never claimed to be perfect. We all have our faults. Apparently so, from what I've heard lately. Really? And what have you heard? Things. Things? That's rather vague. Well... Go ahead. I can tell you're dying to tell me. <laughs> well, I didn't quite hear everything, but there was a man at the tavern the other day. Yes? Does the phrase, uncle's neck, mean anything to you? Oh, apparently so, from the look on your face. What's your game, Hexabeth? My game? My game is just getting through the day, putting up with all the drunken nitwits at the tavern and all those swindlers down at the market square. What a touching story. You smug... You have no idea. It takes everything I have to hold on to my tavern and still be the person that Gideon wanted me to be. And are you that person? Most of the time. Like you said. We all have our faults. Exactly. So, Richard, who are these young ladies you wish me to meet? Oh, they're very charming. Regina and Miranda. Ah, oh, what lovely names. And what is their disposition tonight? Are they... amorous? Well, I'm not quite sure about that, but I do know that they are delightful conversationalists. Oh. They know all the latest gossip from London. Uh-huh. And they know exactly what Lord and Lady so-and-so have been wearing this season. Fascinating. I feel like such a rube living here in the colonies sometimes. Well, I hope they do more than talk fashion and gossip. Thomas, you're always so eager to have a go with the ladies, but these things take time. You have to warm them up a bit. Is that so? Of course, you're not as practiced in the art of romance as I am. You spend so much time studying. That's true. I'm not nearly as skillful in ballroom conversation as you are, but you do have an advantage being so handsome. All the girls in town are naturally drawn to you. Handsome? Do you think so? Yes, Richard. You have the profile of a true aristocrat. Such a perfectly straight nose. I've always envied your looks. I find that hard to believe. I've always thought that it was you that was the handsome one. At least, that's what I've heard some of the ladies say. Really? They said that? Yes. And with your intelligence, great things are expected of you. Given a bit of polishing, you'll be quite the catch. Well, without meaning to sound conceitful, I dare say that we are two of the handsomest, smartest young men in Williamsburg. <laughs> yes, we do make quite a pair. Say, Thomas, before we meet the ladies, perhaps you would like to take a quick walk with me down by the canal. Right now? We don't want to keep Regina and uh, Miranda waiting. A short wait shan't hurt. There's something I want to show you. What? I saw the most exquisite flower blooming down by the canal. But they might Maybe not... Maybe you could identify it for me. It would make a perfect gift for the ladies, but I don't want to embarrass myself by not knowing what flower it is. Well, I'm sure I could tell you exactly what it is. Yes, I'm sure that you can. You're always spouting some newfangled Latin name for the commonest of weeds.
damn these mosquitoes. Really, Richard, I doubt those ladies are still waiting for us. Perhaps we should give up on our search for the legendary flower of the Governor's Canal. Wait, maybe it was down this path. Richard, I can barely see down there. We can look for it some other time. There's just enough moonlight to see by. All right, tell me again what it looked like. A small white flower with purple streaks. I thought you said they were blue. Blue, purple, who can tell the difference? Most people. Thomas, did you mean what you said earlier about me being handsome? Come on, Richard. Don't pretend you're not well aware of your good looks. Well, I may think so, but who knows what other people think. You said something about my aristocratic profile? Yes, your nose is very admirable. More so than the other boys? I suppose so. But I think it's you that's had a bit too much to drink tonight. Let's go back. That flower isn't here. Oh, all right. Perhaps we'll find it in bloom next year. I'll put a reminder in my journal. Thomas, I meant what I said about you earlier. I've always admired your countenance. Uh -huh. The way you carry yourself. So self-assured. Such piercing, commanding eyes. Well, Richard, we seem to have formed quite the mutual admiration society then. But why are we discussing this? Grown men trading compliments? It's unnatural. unnatural. I suppose so. And I suppose I should give up this futile quest. <laughs> But you know, on the other hand, when, when someone is as attractive as you are, I suppose it is a topic worth investigating. A bit. Really? Just a bit. Did I ever mention what strong cheekbones you have? No, I don't believe I ever remember hearing those words coming out of your mouth. <laughs> I can't believe I'm saying this, but I've always admired the way your cheekbones complimented your lips. Good heavens! Yes, your lips. So perfectly formed and smooth, like two little peach wedges. <laughs> Maybe we shouldn't go back just yet. Thomas. Yes, Richard? Thomas, I'm flattered. I've never received such intimate compliments. But all the girls, surely you well, must. Well, yes, but coming from you, someone I truly admire, it's a sensation I have not experienced before. Well, I'm happy to be the cause. Even though I thought you distrusted your senses. Well, not even I can keep my feelings in control all the time. Ah. Oh, Thomas. Though I've never been able to say so, you've always been first in my heart. Kiss me. Kiss you? I, um... <laughs> Good lord. I feel so dizzy. I'm not sure where this is coming from. I've never had feelings like this before. I'm well acquainted with them. Kiss me again. Richard! Thomas! Damn it, Professor Jobriath! Just be quiet and he won't find us. Let's stay here forever. I wish we could. Thomas! Richard! I think he's gone by. Where were we? I was about to unbutton your... Oh, yes, don't stop! Oh, wow, careful! Sorry, there's so many buttons and latches. I'm not used to such fancy dress clothes. Ow, watch what you're doing. That buckle is poking me. Shh. Ouch. Richard? Don't move. Richard, are you down there? Damn it. Oh, there you are. I've been looking all over the pole. Hello, uh, Professor. Uh, uh, hello, sir. Uh, we were looking for a flower and... Yes, uh, I saw it blooming earlier this evening and... God's name is going on here. Nothing. Nothing. We were just... We were just out for a walk. Out for a walk and, uh... <laughs> Don't know what to say. I'm, I'm speechless. But, but, but it was. Uh, we, we were. We were God's only. Sake, pull yourself together immediately. Yes, sir. I'm sorry. Sorry doesn't begin to cover this. Well, oh. this is a rather unfortunate turn of events. <laughs> wow, this reminds me of that time Bob caught me and Shelley Birchfield down by College Creek. God, that was a long time ago. Was that 75 or 76? You know, Margaret, I was trying to think of the last time I was here. Gosh, I think Jimmy Carter was still in office. I think you're right. And your house looks exactly the same. Really? Well, I guess I've been happy with it the way it is. Oh, no, no. I mean, why would you change it? It's nice. Very nice. Thank you. So, Jesse, what inspired your visit today? Well, I... Is it because you've been on a tear with our online Scrabble games? 
My ELO is taking quite a hit, but I'll get it back up there. You can try, Margaret, but I'm a pretty smart cookie when it comes to words. Yes, Jessie, you certainly are, but I'm no slouch either. So, would you like some tea? I've got some right here. Sure, that sounds nice. When that cold front came through today, I thought, brrr, I need something to warm me up, and I had Dale make me a pot before he headed over to the library. So how is Dale? I haven't run into him in a while. Oh, he's fine. Grumpy as ever. It's funny, though. Dale and I were just talking about you the other day. Really? Here you go. Oh, thanks. So what were you saying about me? I'm a little afraid to ask. Well, we were talking about you and Valerie, actually. What about Valerie? Do you mind filling me in? Well, as you know, I see her a lot. Or I used to before my fall. She's been so helpful with my research. Of course, we both know it's not the kind of research a William & Mary professor such as yourself would do. Well, not exactly, but Val's been telling me about all the work you've been doing. Sounds... fun. Oh, Jesse, you don't have to pretend. I know what you think about my interest in the stranger side of Williamsburg. No need to revisit that discussion. Oh, that's probably a good idea. Anyway, you know Valerie always asks me about Dale. And I was wondering... Oh, Dale is going to kill me, but... What? Oh, I was just wondering, is Valerie seeing anyone? Seeing anyone? Yes, I was thinking that Dale's been single for a while now, and if Valerie's unattached... Listen, Margaret, I've found it's best to stay out of Valerie's romantic life. She doesn't want to talk about it, and actually, I'm afraid of what I'd find out if she did. Well, maybe you could just hint around, or... Margaret, maybe we could change the subject. I hear you're not doing your exercises. Don't you think that might speed your recovery along? Oh, for God's sake, does Dale have to discuss my medical history with every last person in Williamsburg? I'll start walking when I'm ready. I know. So how is Julie? Oh, uh, well, she's fine. Unlike you, she's never going to be getting out of her bed. Oh, Jesse, I'm sorry. It's all right. Me and my big mouth. It's just that it's been so long since I've seen her, and it makes me sad when I think about her. She's still the same? Yes, Margaret. Julie's the same. Older, though. And she never gives any sign? No, she never. She never blinks an eye. You know, when I finally get back on my feet, I'd love to see her again. I'd love to talk to her. Talk to her? Well, you hear sometimes that talking that sometimes people in a coma can hear you. It's their She can't hear you, Margaret. She can't hear anyone. I know you mean well, but... What was that? Oh, no, my favorite vase. It just fell off the shelf. By itself? Well, it's only the two of us in here. It must have been the train. I could feel the floor shaking. That is not a good sign. Not good at all. Celia asked me if I knew why Thomas had left the party so early, I had to lie. I couldn't tell her how or why I had arranged events on her behalf. The truth would have crushed her. I couldn't help thinking, though, was it really a victory if Thomas didn't even know why his evening had turned into a disaster? I think not, but I'm going to take care of that. Jesus, I'm glad I never had a run-in with this witch. Shh. Sorry. Seriously, there's no way this diary could be authentic. Could it? What time is it now? Whoa, 2.45? Mom's gonna kill me if I don't get home soon. You know, Valerie wasn't even supposed to show this to me, so I wonder if she might bend the rules to just a little bit more. Yes, it took a while to track it down, but I've got it on hold for you now. Oh, it's no problem. Uh-uh. Well, I don't need to brag, but there is a reason I was named Librarian of the Month five times this year. <laughs> <coughs> One second, sir. Sure. Uh-huh. You can come by any time and pick it up. So... Actually, I don't know why I'm encouraging Mom and all this supernatural nonsense. Sure. We I guess I'm just a big softie. All right, I'll see you then. Bye-bye. Shoo! Thanks for waiting. How can I help you? I'd like to speak to Valerie Dunhill. Is she still here? I think so. I saw her in the back earlier. Let me go get her. I'll be right back. Thank you. All right, Dale. Let's see if you can sweet talk Valerie into making an off the record checkout. Ah! Oh my God! What the hell was that? 
You have been listening to another installment of the 100% historically accurate audio drama, Lost in Williamsburg. Tonight's episode was entitled, Feelings. This evening's cast included Louise Minjez as Margaret Souter, Joan Turner as Jesse Dunhill, Colleen Kennedy as Hexabeth Blackard, Mark Hudgens as Thomas Jefferson, John Shuey as Richard Holcomb, Frederick Corney as Professor Jabriah, Martha Candler-Smith as Linda, and Will Hausman as Dale Souter. Tune in again next week as the story continues. Oh my God, this can't be happening. It can't be happening. Zeph, you're finally here. Uh Uh-oh, I think Zeph's in trouble. Leave it alone, Josh. This episode of Lost in Williamsburg was transcribed word for word and note by note from the mouth of Philip Merritt during a bacterially induced fever dream. Many of the sound effects used in the production were downloaded from freesound.org. Thank you for listening. This is your host, Caroline Corney, saying, I think I've just discovered the secret of Hexabus' powers of persuasion. It's all about the echo. Let me give it a try. You will tell all your friends to tune in to Lost in Williamsburg. You will leave a comment or review on iTunes. And finally, you will send $20 to Philip Merritt through PayPal. Good night.